The populations of ancient North Africa are an enigma. When we look at that region today, just about any phenotype imagined can be discovered there. Though ancient North Africa obviously can't be seen as the same as modern North Africa, an agreeable parallel is its genetic diversity. The African continent is the most genetically diverse continent in the world. I suspect the reason for this is because according to some scholars, Africa is the birthplace of humanity. Today, let's talk about the exciting new discovery of the Takakori women's genome profile of ancient southwestern Libya. What up African world, it's Somtim here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. My team and I have been doing our best to include animation and motion graphics in our videos. It takes a lot of effort and resources to do animation. And so, with the support of our patrons, we can continue working with Playwatch, the studio producing these animated videos. This channel cannot continue producing this kind of animated content without your continued Patreon support. Additionally, if you're interested in your own animated content, and would like to work with Playwatch, their link along with Patreons is in the description box below. Archaeologists have uncovered a window into a vibrant Neolithic African past. Tekakori is an ancient rock shelter in southwestern Libya where researchers found the remains of two ancient North African women from approximately 7,000 years ago. The Takakori shelter, first explored in the early 2000s, has revealed a wealth of human remains, dating between 10,000 and 5,000 years ago. Among the most striking finds are the skeletal remains of women buried with care and ceremony, offering clues about their lives, diets, and movements across ancient North Africa. A new study in 2024, published in Nature, analyzed the genomes of these Neolithic individuals in great detail. The researchers discovered that the Takakori women carried a genetic lineage that diverged early from the lineages typically found in Africa below the Sahara. So what does this mean? Simply put, they were part of Africa's indigenous population diversity. According to the Nature article, the Takakori genome data shows affinities with other Saharan Africans and Central African Sahelians but they also carry distinct signatures not fully shared with Africans below the Sahara or populations outside of the continent. This may be challenging for individuals who seek to obstinately subscribe to any particular set of absolute beliefs concerning African history and African people. In other words, the data is showing some complexity. It's difficult to simplify ancient North African history into a this or that. However, those in the African diaspora are often confronted with narratives that phenotypes typical of Africans below the Sahara were not indigenous to the north, as if the Sahara was some natural barrier of that particular phenotype. This simply wasn't the case. To demonstrate this point, consider the famous so-called Black Mummy found in southwestern Libya, another Saharan site not too far from the Takakori women. This child mummy, dated to roughly 5,000 years ago, was naturally mummified by the dry desert air. Researchers suggest the child likely belonged to a dark-skinned population, with clear phenotypical affinities to Africans below the Sahara. This finding illustrates that those phenotypical features deemed sub-Saharan were likely common throughout ancient North Africa. Some researchers point to Neolithic cave paintings in the central Sahara that depict people with dark skin tones, hairstyles resembling tightly curled hair, and distinct cultural attire. While these images don't depict the Takakori women directly, they reflect the phenotypes of populations living in broadly the same region and period. Caution should be considered, however, because cave art can be interpretive and pigmentation is not necessarily always literal. However, most archaeologists seem to agree that dark skin would have been common in that region and time period. For those of us in the African diaspora, this is a self-evident reality. Many in our community have grown wary of the excessive parsimony when it comes to black African contribution to ancient North African history. Genetic diversity in Africa is a fact, and it gives the continent its salience. This new discovery of the Takakori women represents this fact quite well. 
Studies consistently show that African populations have more genetic variation between them than populations on other continents. The genetic divergence observed in the Takakori burials suggests that these people were not a homogenous group. The Nature article emphasizes that their genomes are not only distinct from present-day sub-Saharan populations, but from modern North African groups as well. This suggests long periods of regional isolation with occasional gene flow across the Sahara. Now, let's take a journey into some speculation regarding the possible appearance of these ancient North African women. I know we can't resist imagining what these ancient North African women look like. If we were to envision the phenotype of the Takakori women based on genetic data, climate adaptation, and other comparative studies, it's likely that they had dark skin, a reasonable assumption given their environment. They may have had features commonly associated today with dark-skinned Saharan and Sahelian peoples. Although the nature study didn't express specific pigmentation genes, considering the timeline and the environmental context, it's doubtful that lighter skin was ubiquitous in these populations. I mean, combined with the evidence from the so-called black mummy also found in southwestern Libya, in addition to the ancient North African rock art throughout the region, it is a reasonable hypothesis that the Takakori women were within the range of typical dark-skinned Africans. I think this is an inference to the best explanation for what they may have looked like. But enough with the speculation. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. Given the data and all other variables, what would you consider a reasonable assumption? Regardless, the Takakori women offers a glimpse into the cultural lives of these Neolithic Africans. Their graves include ritual objects, stone tools, and evidence of early pastoralism. They were raising livestock in a green Sahara that no longer exists. Their story also reminds us that Africa's past isn't static. Climate change repeatedly reshaped the Sahara. Each transformation left its imprint on the genetics, culture, and movements of people across the continent. The Takakori women and their ancient neighbors belong to a lineage of African humanity that was innovative, resilient, and diverse. I imagine the complexity of these findings challenged some assumptions we all have about African history and its people, reminding us that Africa's genetic and cultural past predates the borders, divisions, and ideologies we often subscribe to today. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, support the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.